All right. Hey, it is season four, everybody. Four. Oh, yeah. Season four. Season four. Four. It's an R at the end. Season four of Thriving Thursday. <laughs> my name is Stephen Hayes. This is my wife. Lauren. And we are S and L. And you're watching Thriving, Thriving Thursday. Thursday. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Cause you need them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Cause you need them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Cause you need them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily, cause you need them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily, cause you need them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily. Walk with them daily, cause you need them daily. Alright, welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, we're so excited to be with you. It's Thriving Thursday, season four. This is our first episode, and we took a nice little sabbatical. A nice was, long, maybe. Okay, well, it was a sabbatical either way. <laughs> anyway, we took some time off. It was great. I spent some time as a family, um, went through the holidays, got the kids back in school. We're back in school. There's so much new stuff going on. You want to tell them what you got going on for you? No. No, okay, all right. Well, for <laughs> me, I'm back in school. I'm so excited. I'm taking anatomy and physiology one, and man, it's a lot to remember, but. It is a lot of fun also. I really enjoy learning about the human body, biology, science. I love it. It's one of my things. It's just, ah, it gets me. You're really so, pumped up. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Yep. Yes. I'm also taking a couple of drawing classes. Man, that's awesome. Whew. Man, I just, I, I am really just loving, yeah. growing, and learning right now. And, and really just in, and taking it all in like a sponge right now. Just soaking it all up. Soaking it all up. <laughs> All right, so hey, in case you didn't know, my name is Stephen Hayes. This is my wife, Lauren Hayes. This is SNL. And what we've been doing is we've been putting out videos to try and encourage and help uh, others through different situations, difficult ones, some of them just kind of sharing some of our life experiences to try to help you grow, to try to um, take what we've learned, uh, take some of the mistakes that we've made even, and share that with you so that way you'd actually have a chance to also uh, be able to grow. So we, we look at it as, you know, you can learn from our mistakes so you don't make some of the same ones. Um, but then- less, It's less painful that way. Yeah, less painful, man. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, but then also allowing uh, allowing you know you guys the opportunity to um, to kind of grow with this you know and, and learn with this and so we want to share our knowledge and our experiences to to help others and this is one of our opportunities to be able to do it. And I would say, I don't think we're an expert in all things, but we do have experience. We've been married twelve years. Twelve years. Twelve years. Oh, that and was a question mark. I'm concerned now. <laughs> y'all, y'all, so y'all heard that. We have four kids. Yes. For those that and four under eight well actually eight, eight and under i'm um, ranging in ages from eight to three yeah all right <laughs> hey well like you can see we just want to let you know about us um you had to probably clean yeah. up right off i'm really I'm, I'm retired military so i served in the united states army um as a welder a chaplain assistant and finally as a recruiter for the chaplain corps so chaplain recruiter and yeah, we got a lot of experience doing uh, a lot of those different jobs. Uh, did 12 months in Iraq as a chaplain assistant, um, you know, running missions and, and really just uh, interacting with the local population there. Um, Iraq was an interesting time in my life, but it definitely gave me a lot of, yeah, because there was, there was some good experiences, you know, being able to go out on humanitarian missions. Um, and then there were also some tough, you know, yeah, experiences, situation. you know, being shot at, being, you know, bombed. So. That happened a lot, but you know, we've kind of taken all those things mm -hmm. and, and really find a way that I can encourage um, other people that that are out there. Um, you don't have to, li you know, live in, in a, a foreign country in order to be shot at or anything like that. Um, unfortunately, wow. I'm Thank just saying. <laughs> unfortunately, there's some neighborhoods right here in the U.S. That, where that happens. Uh, so, yeah. you know, just kind of uh, sharing with you some of my experiences and and uh, some of my background as far as you know where that comes from. Yeah, I think. Um for tonight's discussion, I think I will tap into a little bit of um, my education background. I have a bachelor's in psychology, and I was also a chaplain in the army, so some things might be relevant, but I only had four years, 
so it's not necessarily the, the exact same experience, but um, I think that we know a little bit something that we're talking about, but we're not claiming to be, you know, all knowing, but we just want to share what, what um, we learned. And tonight's topic we're going to talk about is boundaries. boundaries. Gotta have some healthy boundaries. So we're going to talk about that tonight. <laughs> so yeah. to get us started. Could you please help me and the people out there understand what we mean when we talk about boundaries? Because boundaries could be a whole lot of different things. So what are we talking about when we talk about boundaries? I am talking, we're talking, we're going to be talking about boundaries as in um, kind of like the lines and the protection and the limits you put on um, yourself to protect yourself. Um, this is maybe emotionally, physically, um, and I, I don't know in any other way. Mentally, men, yeah. Yes, just to keep for self care to keep, yeah. Um, yeah. To keep you safe for yeah. protection, yeah. And there's you know different areas we can talk about uh, kids boundaries with kids because kids need boundaries. Yeah. A lot of research shows that like kids actually thrive when they have boundaries and rules in place because they know what's expected of them. And of course they like to test the boundaries <laughs> every once in a while. Like, is that still, is that still the same? Is, you know, if I, you know, do this, will I still get in trouble? They like to test every once in a while, but um, they can feel safe because they know, you know, what's expected as in um, different from maybe being in a house with no boundaries, um, maybe, you know, some there's different parenting styles in, in your work, you need to have set up boundaries sometimes <laughs> because if you don't have healthy boundaries, um, you can get taken advantage of or you can just get burnt out. Yeah. Um, and just in personal, I guess, what, do you want to talk about that first or? Yeah, you want to go, since you're already kind of hidden on it, the different types of boundaries, yes. we'll go ahead and just start talking about some of the different types okay. of boundaries. Um, I, well, I think that you should talk about work boundaries because I always thought you were better at this than me. <laughs> Stephen in the army was so funny with his boundaries. He he knew all the the, the um, rules in the army and stuff, and he would always say, um, "No, I don't have to do that." If someone tried to t tell him to do something that was illegal, immoral, or unethical, all the time, <laughs> and there was quite a lot of that actually. Um, Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> it just felt like that was um, people pushing the boundary, and maybe some of them, you know, didn't know they didn't know the boundary because, like, I know I didn't know all the rules until you're like, hey, you should probably read these, and I thought, why am I going to read all these? There's like a lot of <laughs> army regulations, like <laughs> it's just too much. I mean, even reading it, no way you and can I remember say all that. I knew them all, but like I said, no, you, you don't have to one. know. You don't have to know them all. You just need to know where to find them. To know how to reference information. So if yeah. you're, you know, we talk about the workplace right now. Mm -hmm. um, we were in the Army, and that's what she's referencing. When I was in the Army, I was a chaplain assistant. I was a, a supervisor. We call it a non-commissioned officer in charge or a supervisor. I managed a facility and you know, I managed personnel as well. So one of the things that we had that I had to do um, when, you know, being a supervisor and managing people, both civilian and military, um, I had to look at how I could set uh, healthy boundaries mm -hmm. in our office and in our workplace. And so one of those boundaries that she was just kind of uh, hinting at was um, when I had a supervisor giving me instruction, knowing the rules and the regulations that govern our facility, that govern my position. And sometimes I didn't know, I know it may seem like I knew everything, but really I, I knew how to research information. I did, I did learn quite a no, bit. He knew it's he'd be like, AR 165-1 says blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I don't, was the other regulation? Oh, it's been so long. The yeah, other big has. one. When it came to uniforms, it's 670-1, right? Yeah, it's been a while. See, look, yeah. it's been that long. It's been it's that long. Been I'm long retired time. now, so <laughs> yes. Um, anyways, yeah, yeah, the uniform, yeah, the uniform code of military justice. You know, that was something else we had to know. That's that's our, our mean, big bit book for yeah. rules and regulations. You know, the guidelines. So even boundaries with maybe people you're working with. Like I worked in account the counseling center, and there's boundaries set up there too to protect you and the clients. Like um, the chaplain set up a boundary where he didn't want to counsel a, f a female if um, I wasn't there in the office, just because. Um, just for everyone's safety, I guess. 
just because so that way you know someone can't say something happened or it could look bad that's more i think what he was worried about like because yeah. um you know if you're married and then you're just spending alone time with someone it could appear a certain way or Makes sense. i don't I, know I thought it was good or number. sometimes in counseling and client relationship clients can sometimes i mean i guess counselors too you, you sometimes hear about in the rule in the in um, news but it's i mean it's illegal but they like fall in love with their counselor because they think oh he listens or she listens and um they start um building a relationship yeah beyond the client you're, you're, yes because you have this trust and stuff so you have to set you know boundaries with clients it feels weird to like say in my new j i have a new job <laughs> part-time job but um it's working with um in a counseling center in a counseling setting and um you have to have boundaries also with like there's different rules that govern it like um like accepting gifts for instance um if a kid you're working with made you a picture of course you can take take the picture it's it's okay um but i think there's like a monetary value of like I think it's 25 nothing more than $25 and even so be really careful like what you take like maybe not like flour it's just it's all up to kind of interpretation at some yeah. point but you know you just have to like protect that so um or even like a hug for instance like between co-workers um that yeah, could sexual be sexual harassment it's the person that perceives it reports it but just but even a you know a boundary could make you feel uncomfortable can make the other person feel uncomfortable um you know a boundary there would be like you know asking before just touching someone yeah. um and when, just, when in doubt in the workplace a professional handshake goes a long way <laughs> you can never go wrong with a professional handshake but yeah i mean when you think you know anyway that's about all i was going to say about work workplace yeah. stuff but um, those kind of boundaries. Oh, what about boundaries with like your boss? Yes. Which is so, a harder one. <laughs> I that's, that's, that was one of the ones that, that we started talking about with, uh, with the military. Um, with the supervisor, uh, he, I had a supervisor at one time that would uh, ask me to do things or actually he, he would give me orders, uh, direct orders to uh, carry out a certain act. Um, <laughs> I realized that for me that was one it was immoral and and two it was unethical um, and in some cases he didn't realize it but there were things that yeah. based on perception could have been also considered illegal as well um, but you know it, you know trying trying to think of what I'm uh, the information allowed this year <laughs> essentially um, what wound up happening is when he gave me the instructions because I knew some of these rules um, one I responded with no sergeant I, I remain respectful and that's something important to remember when you're, you're dealing with your supervisor, your boss, um, remain respectful. So I, I need, I initially I had to, I had to tell him no. So the boundary was set when I said no, but then I followed that up with respect. No, Sergeant. That's how you properly address someone superior. So well, no, sir, no, ma'am, I'm not going to do that. And here's the reason why. And I, t I explained to him, you know, this is actually un immoral. This is unethical. And so for these reasons, I, I'm not going to do that. And ironically, uh, the individual was shocked that I said no. He's like, you can't tell me no. You have to follow whatever, you have to do whatever I tell you. I say, no, no, I don't have to do whatever you tell me. There are three <laughs> exceptions to that policy and I am covered by UCMJ or the Unifor Uniform Code of Military Justice yeah. um, for any legal action. I am covered and that is if it's illegal, immoral, immoral. or yeah. unethical, I do not have to follow those orders. And a lot of jobs will have kind of a code of, code of ethics conduct. Yes, stuff. absolutely. But I was going to say... I think best case scenario is what you said, like with respect and stuff, but think about it if it was sexual harassment. I'm not gonna, I would never tell someone, you have to be respectful and say, no, I don't like your dances. You could just, I think you could yell no. No. <laughs> so I don't know. I think the best case scenario, you would be able to just state it firmly and calmly, but 